Hello everyone, hello, hello. Let's have a look who's online. Hello guys, how are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> nice to see you. Mr. Joe Bartlett, how are you doing? Hello guys, Mohammed. How are you? Nice to see everyone. Hi Mama. Uh, I'm ready to rock and roll today. I'm ready to rock and roll today. Welcome everybody, welcome. <laughs> all right, all right, let's have a look at you. Welcome everybody, Mr. Halil. John, how you doing? What's cooking? Well, got a nice dish for you today, John. So, it's a nice one. All right. So, before we start, let's just get everybody here. Give us a wave if you're about. Give us a wave. It'll be super cool. Ward Beer, how are you? All right, let's have a look. Lester, nice to see you. How's everyone? Okay, we've got a few people in today, so uh, no pressure, no pressure. I'm super prepared for today, super prepared. So uh, yeah, we're gonna just do uh, one simple dish. Um, before I talk, I'm just gonna have one more minute or so uh, to make sure that everybody's joined in and then rock and roll. All right? Okay. Whew. Let's have a look. All right, peeps. Okay, we've got more people joining in, which is great. Which is great. I hope you're hungry. I hope you're hungry. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you're hungry. Because we're going to do some smashing stuff today. Some really, really cool stuff. So, um, I think uh, we should begin. We should begin, right? So, first of all, uh, a very, very warm welcome. Uh, thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining me. Uh, we're going to be doing one really cool dish, and this is all about uh, board beer and uh, all in conjunction with the Irish Food Board. Uh, we've, we're going to talk about some incredible beef. At the same time, I'm going to be hosting and holding a competition, so please watch carefully. And I'm going to be giving you all the details about how to win the competition a little bit later on. So, without further ado, I think we should start. Right, Mr. Trotsky, nice to see you. What we're going to be doing is one dish and it's called plate like a pro. So whenever we, we're going to be posting anything about this, the hashtag is plate like a pro. Really, really important. Now, first things first, we're going to have this beautiful beef. And we've got one, one dish in Central, which is uh, one of our signature restaurants uh, in Me Dubai. So uh, and if you don't know me, I'm James Lai Pacheco, the executive chef of Me Dubai. And very, very happy to be the executive chef. We've got some amazing things going on there and really cannot wait to open up again and show you some incredible things. For example, this dish. Now, the dish we're going to be cooking today is called Dig in the Ribs. Now, uh, I don't know if any of you have had a Dig in the Ribs. It hurts a little bit, but this one is a bit different. What we're going to be doing is cooking a ribeye. Um, and the dish, essentially, is beef and onion, but we're going to essentially pimp it up a little bit. Normally, everybody knows the fillet steak, okay, fine. However, what we're going to be cooking with today is one of my favorite meats, which is the ribeye. Now, the ribeye is beautiful because it has all of the fat, intrinsic fat, all around it, which is really, really nice, and it's super, super tasty. This piece is Irish, so it's Irish beef from John Stone. Uh, please go and have a look at johnstonebeef.com. Really, really amazing. Go and have a look at this. Uh, the other thing that we need to focus on that I really love to do is to have beef which is grass-fed. Now, grass-fed not only gives the, the beef incredible marbling, it gives it a beautiful texture and it's ruby. So you can see some, sometimes you buy beef and it's a little bit off color. It should be ruby, ruby red. And at the same time, what they do over at John Stone is they like to uh, air dry it for, for quite a long time. So please go and have a look. Now the air drying or air aging system basically gives the meat a lot of nice maturity and beautiful flavor. 
Now, really important, really important, make sure you source responsibly and sustainably. It's, this, is, this is a massive thing that we do, and also what we do at Me, Me Dubai, we look at all our suppliers and we make sure that everything is sustainable, especially in this day and age, right? Okay, so we're going to be focusing on how to cook this beef and then I'm going to plate it. The competition is to win a meal for two at Me Dubai in Central and I will be cooking for you. So if you're not in Dubai and you're in London or in Ireland, I'm really sorry, but come and see us when you can, when you can, all right? So first things first, the one thing which I always speak about is whenever cooking meat, I'm using corn oil. I do not use olive oil because olive oil has a much higher flash point. Sorry, uh, sorry olive oil has a lower flash point. Uh, for example, it can burn when it gets up to 120 degrees olive oil, then it starts to burn, which is not very nice. So we use a neutral oil. And a neutral oil can be a sunflower oil or a corn oil. This is the best thing, all right? So that's what I'm gonna use. Then with the meat, I'm gonna focus on the meat first of all. Nice high heat, loads of salt, and I'm using uh, Cornish sea salt here. So really good for the heart. We don't like to use table salt normally because it's, it's what they call the heart clogger. It's not, not really very nice. So have a look at this, quite a lot of salt. Quite a lot of salt, really, really important. Um, you're gonna think, oh my God, it's gonna be too much salt, but actually as you start to cook it, you won't. Now the most important thing when cooking any piece of meat, it must have a high, super high temperature. If not, you're not gonna caramelize it. And you wanna have that caramelization uh, basically for flavor, and they call it the Maillard effect, if you wanna have a look and be a bit geeky about it, right? So, my oil is now nice and hot. It's got up to around 170 degrees, and it will be super, super hot now. It's gonna to start to smoke. Now, be very, very careful. And really important at this stage, I'm not doing the chef thing of shaking the pan. Don't shake the pan. This is the worst thing you can do. You wanna just keep the beef in one area, okay? Keep it in one So make sure you keep or only on one side, nice high heat at all times. Super important. All right, super important. Now, what we're also going to do is we're gonna make a sauce in the same pan. So we're gonna make a really, really beautiful little horseradish sauce, or so sometimes chefs call it deglazing. But what we're gonna do is it's just nice and simple, not too much drama. At this point, Now, as you can see, the meat is really nicely coloured here, right? Really, really well coloured. Now, I've got some aromatics. Aromatics are uh, garlic, thyme and rosemary. So, I'm going to put in a bit of thyme and rosemary, okay? So, they're going to go in. Don't forget my favourite ingredient. A bit of butter. Don't forget a little bit of butter, okay? And we're going to baste this. Everything stays in the pan. And the last thing you're going to do is Mr. Garlic goes in, aromatics. That's right, Halia. So, really important, right? We want that flavour to be coating the beef all the time. We want that flavour to be going in. Now, this is really important. Now, a lot of you will be like, oh my God, it's so much butter. Yeah, it is, but it's also flavor. So that's why it's so important, right? So, I'm basting that really nicely now. And because it's quite a small piece of beef, actually, it's not gonna take too much cooking. At the same time, when I'm basting this, I'm actually, just caramelizing the top. I don't know if you can see that. I'm just constantly basting this. That's exactly what we want. So I'm just gonna turn that off. And now what I'm going to do, the, the rule is, 
I'm going to rest it. Okay? So let's rest this. Because don't forget that this is a muscle and uh, it's, if I serve it straight away, it's going to be really, really tough. So what I want to do is I want to rest that piece of meat for half the time I cooked it. All right, so with any piece of meat that we do, especially red meat, you rest it half the time that you cook it. So we've cooked this now for roughly five minutes. I'm going to rest it for two to three minutes. And actually, even if I rest it for, for let's say, 10 minutes, it's still going to be quite hot and quite warm inside and keeping the temperature. Now, what we want to do is the doneness. So the doneness generally, if, if everybody puts their right hand up, okay, and you, or, or left, whichever, right, like, like so, everybody knows this technique, which is basically the first one here is rare, all right, rare, middle finger, medium rare, chef's choice. This third finger, this one here is medium, and the next one, well done, all right? So don't forget that, don't forget that, really important, okay? Rare, medium rare, medium, well done. Yeah, so it all depends on you. So now, this has started to rest nicely and I want to start to make this sauce. In here, don't forget, this is what I need. This is the key. All the flavor is in here. So what we're gonna do, back again, what I'm gonna have for the sauce is I'm gonna get, and all the recipe, you're gonna have all the recipes, so don't worry, I'm gonna give you absolutely everything. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put the pan on again, and this time, normally, if you were in a kitchen, or in a professional kitchen, we use a lot of stocks, for example, so you've got beef stock, chicken stock, things like this, but I'm gonna be using what we call in England, council stock, or water, all right? Now I'm gonna bring this fat up to almost boiling point. So very, very gently, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this water in the pan, and essentially gonna make an emulsification. So you can hear it, and I've got to just add flavours to this, because actually it's delicious. So if you have a look, water's gone in, right? I've not done anything yet. I want to bring this to the boil. So let's bring this up to the boil. At the same time, start to add my flavours. First things first, right? I like my sauces quite sweet. All right, so sugar, two teaspoons of sugar go in first. Susie salt, Percy pepper, of course, of course. Pepper's gone in. A little bit of Worcestershire sauce, okay, Worcestershire sauce. So that's going to go in to get that nice rich colour. Now as you can see, I'm starting to boil this quite aggressively because it's really, really important, okay? So, this, this sauce now is going to add a lot of flavour. Now this Worcestershire sauce, again, beautiful from Ireland, so thank you very much for being for that. As this starts to reduce, I want to punch in my flavour. Alright, so, what we're doing now is I'm going to add some horseradish. If you don't like horseradish or you think it's too strong, mustard is amazing. Yeah? It all depends, but the point is that you must have the flavour of the pan. All right, you want those juices from the steak. And don't forget, my steak is nicely resting. Okay. So, how do I know that the sauce is ready? How do we know? So we're just going to stir this. Now, at the moment, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to add things like corn flour or flour or anything like that because naturally this horseradish or your mustard will thicken the sauce quite nicely the other thing is if you don't want to use granulated or white sugar you can use things like honey you can use things like honey uh, agave syrup um, some people like to use treacle for example or, or, or black treacle all right so we're just going to get that really roasted down. 
Now please don't forget, we're in a competition. The competition, a meal for two, okay? At Central, our signature restaurant at Me Dubai. And I will personally cook it for you. So, if you're in England or in France or wherever that may be, first of all, thank you very much for joining to be signed. Hola, como estas? Um, please enjoy the recipe, but I would love to cook for all of you. I would love to cook for all of you, however I can. So, this is still boiling away really, really nicely. The next thing that we're going to discuss, so as I said, the, the, the dish that you're going to be plating up or recreating is called dig in the ribs. Right? So, dig in the ribs. Why? Just because I like the name dig in the ribs. That's all. And it's all to do with the, the, the beef that we're, we're talking about today, which is the ribeye. Okay? The ribeye coming from Ireland, Johnstone beef, absolutely beautiful and amazing, and I'm going to give you all of the recipes for that. Now what's going to happen is, this has started to boil really nicely. Now, horseradish here, in we go. Now I like the sauce quite strong, yeah? So, it's completely up to you how you want to do it. This has started to boil really nicely. Now, I, now you can see the sauce has started to come down a little bit. But the other thing that you need to add, okay, and we need a little bit more, little bit more heat here. The other thing that you need to add is the acidity. That's going to come from. It's the juice, right? So, a little bit of lemon juice there. Fantastic. And if you can have a, a quick look at the pan and to see how that's beginning to come together and boil, this now has become an emulsified sauce and really, really become beautifully emulsified. Now, I wouldn't be a chef if I didn't taste it, right? So, just make sure you are constantly tasting your sauces. Don't be that person which tastes at the end and goes, oh, I wish I tasted it. No, not cool. So now this is really, really nice, yeah? I'm gonna add a little touch more sugar, just for my liking. Okay, in we go. Now that's emulsified really beautifully. Really, really amazing. This stage, heat off. And I'm actually gonna strain this. So, I'm ready. So now we're going to strain everything. Okay, in we go. And that, all we want is that flavour. All we want is that flavour. And whenever you're doing anything, uh, even if you're pan frying meat, fish, this is a really lovely way of making a sauce. And super fast. Super fast. Most of the time you can find all of these ingredients, you already have them in your cupboard. So, it's nice and easy for you. Next thing that we need to focus on now is the plating. So, don't forget the competition, plate like a pro. Yeah, hashtag, use the hashtag plate like a pro. And now this is where we like to uh, do the magic, right? So, let's make sure that the plate is beautifully wiped, nice and clean. So the ingredients that I have, we know about the beef because I've been talking about it quite a lot. And this dish essentially is beef and onion. So I've got different elements of beef that I'm going to share with you. And sorry, different onions that I'm going to share with you. So first things first, I've made a really, really beautiful and light puree out of shallots. So these are um, banana shallots, really sweet in flavour. And don't forget, when you recreate this recipe, you need to try and do the best you possibly can in order to make sure you win that meal, all right? So, we're gonna do a little round. We're gonna start in the, in the middle, just like so, just to make that little pattern there. That's gonna be the base. Secondly, what I have also done is I've got some really beautiful baby leeks, and we've charred these. So essentially what you can do, again, you can char grill them or you can pan roast them super high heat. Shh, shh, done deal. And I, you can do these way in advance, as I have. 
All right? So, that will go in the middle as a base. Secondly, what I've got here, I've got some banana shallots. So don't forget what I've done. I've got banana shallot puree and then braised banana shallots. The recipe, by the way, I'll tell you in just a second where you can find all the recipe, all right? This is going down here. And the other one, just almost on the opposite side, yeah? The last piece of onion that we're going to do is I have made a really simple, easy and basic balsamic onion jam. Now, again, recipes coming up, so be ready. But what we're going to do, because we do, we're plating like a pro, don't forget, hashtag plate like a pro. What we're going to be doing is just doing the old, what we call the quenelle. So essentially when you're quenelling, you're trying to get the shape of a rugby ball. Yeah, so just keep practicing. Yeah, especially with all the chefs that I've worked with in the past, they know like a meticulous for quenelling, especially you, Mr. Yusuf. All right, so quenelling and make sure you've got the right spoons. Yeah. So now we have the base for the dish. We have onion, so or shallot, shallot puree, braised shallots, baby leek, char grilled, and then the onion jam. We've got our sauce here, which is ready to rock and roll, and then of course we're going to be doing the beef. Most importantly, so don't forget that the whole time that I've been talking, the beef has been resting. Now. There it is. I'm going to keep the little rosemary for a little bit of a garnish. And now it's time to slice into the beef. Now, depending on how you like it, don't forget, it's all about, you know, is it well done? Is it medium? All of those sorts of things, yeah? The fat has melted really, really nicely. It's had a lot of time to rest. And what we're going to do is just be serving two little slices because I want to show off this little piece here. Now, what chefs normally do is when we're slicing, the other thing and the, tr the trick that we do in, in restaurants, because you've got home seasoning and restaurant seasoning. Now, in restaurant seasoning, we will again season the meat once we open into it. That's why you, you'll feel a little bit different when you're cooking at home, all right? So, I'm gonna season the meat now, I'm just, I'm just going to show you. For me, this is exactly how I like ribeye. Just like so, yeah? Quite, quite red, quite meaty, really, really beautiful. And I'm just going to finish the whole dish now. So what we're going to do is the beef is going along the char grilled, I'm going to cut one more piece actually. And make sure you've got a sharp knife when you're cutting, really important, yeah? Uh, where should we go? Just here. And finally, what I'm going to do is, don't forget that I've got my sauce. So this sauce is now emulsified really, really nicely. So I'm going to do the old chefy thing, all right, of sourcing just a little bit around, okay. I'm going to use a really nice, really nice olive oil over the top, just to split it slightly. And then to finish, I'm going to do some really gorgeous chives all the way around. Now, back in me Dubai, what we normally do with this is we make a really super strong chai oil. All right, super strong chai oil to do that. All right, and there's the dish. Nice and easy, right? Nice and easy. It's beautiful, right? Hey guys. So all about flavors, 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 flavors. Where can you get all the information from now, right? Don't forget, I want you to recreate this dish. Now, if you can't get 
uh, you know, Johnstone beef, go to your local butcher, uh, find out, go online, they'll, they'll, have a, they'll have a website, get it delivered to you. Most importantly, make sure that it's grass fed, really important. Can you use sirloin steak? Yes. Can you use ribeye? Absolutely. Can you use fillet? Yes. However, my personal choice, get a steak which is really full of flavor, which is the ribeye, right? Dig in the ribs. Don't forget, this dish is called dig in the ribs. Now, the information is, if you go straight after this, click onto my Instagram bio, okay? And you'll see a big title saying dig in the ribs, and bang. All the information, the photograph is there, you'll see everything that's going on. And please, please, please have a go yourself. The sauce that you can make is super simple. It's all about making this dish really, really beautiful. And I've compounded it, don't forget, with loads of different onion flavors. So we've got the child grilled baby leek, uh, the shallot, the shallot puree, the jam, all of the information is in that bio. So make sure straight after this, click on the bio. I would also put it on my IGTV, just so you can re-watch it again. But please make sure that you tag myself and it's hashtag pro like a chef in order to win the competition. I really want to cook for you. Hi Claire, uh, <laughs> all the way from England. Um, please make sure that you, you really, really do this because I, I want to cook for you. Don't forget, I'll be cooking for you personally if you're in Dubai, all right? If you have any questions for me, let me know. Um, send me on, on uh, DM or you can send it to my website. I'll be happy to help you. All right, really important, re-watch again. And then I would also like to say a huge thank you very much to uh, Board Beer for hosting this. And, and there's gonna be lots of other chefs doing this. So please make sure you keep watching. At the same time, thank you for John Stone for providing this beautiful, beautiful beef. And please, when you can, come and see us in me Dubai when we have reopened and everything is back to normal we would love to see you there all right thank you so much for watching all right and uh, we will see you again make sure you try this all right bye 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 everyone